another. Themistocles, you've come a long way to stroke your cock whilst watching real men train. And because Spartan women were allowed to have an opinion, we're told that they were involved in politics. Give me your ships, Gorgor. I will make sure that Xerxes wishes he never crossed the Aegean. You will receive no Spartan ships. We are not interested in a united Greece. That is your dream, Themistocles, not ours. It's not beyond the bounds of reason that a man like Themistocles would meet a queen like Gorgo. It begins as a whisper, a promise. The lightest of breezes dances through the rigging as it creaks above the death cries of 10,000 men. It's rather brilliant that the film is narrated by Queen Gorgo. A wind, my brothers, of sacrifice. A wind of freedom. A wind of justice. Because it would, in real historical terms, only have been Spartan women who were allowed a voice at that time. We do not hear that Spartan women led Spartan warriors into battle. That is pure poetic fantasy, I have to say. Gorgo just disappears from history. We don't know what happens to her. We know that she did have a son with Leonidas called Pleistarchus, who goes on to be king and to rule. He's very young at the time, so I'd like to imagine Gorgo, the power, not really so far behind the throne, kind of the, pretty much the power of the throne. But again, she disappears from history, so the, the last we hear of her is as the wife of Leonidas. I think it'd be really strange if Gorgo, who was a powerful woman in her own right, hadn't heard about this extraordinary commander of ships, Artemisia, who'd sailed across from Persia, who'd won great battles, who'd proven her military might on the battlefields of the sea. They wouldn't have met, but it would have been very odd, wouldn't it, if that news hadn't got to her? So I like to think of Artemisia and Gorgo, who were about the same age, had similar degrees of power and influence, hearing of one another's names and just imagining what it would have been like to meet and uh, maybe to team up. Yes, my brother, I am Greek by birth. And I have Greek blood running through my veins. But my heart is Persian. <laughs> version of Artemisia is a fantastical, embellished version that's being portrayed by Gorgo as she spins the yarn that is her version of the previous battles. She's a favorite of Herodotus, and Herodotus is writing somewhere around 430, 428, maybe a little later, 420. So he's got 50 years to reformulate what had happened, and Artemisia has become a folk heroine. I would like to think that he talked to the children of Persian nobles who were there. Probably.